my sisters, my mom, everybody was there, you know, to let me know it's going to be okay, whatever you need, you know, we're here for you. Even when I didn't want them to be, you know, I tried to, you know, shut everybody out, they still came and was like, no, we're going to go through this with you. I have a group of girlfriends and uh, they called themselves the A-Team <laughs> and they would accompany me to a lot of my treatments. We would hang out or they would come and get me out of my house and we'd go for walks in the neighborhood. I had a, a great support system and it is nice even almost seven years out when you see someone and they're like, hey, where are you now? Because it used to be almost other people feared asking how you were doing. I love talking to women about it because it's a connect that every woman has. We all got boobs. So when you're dealing with a woman that's going through breast cancer or not through breast cancer, they still can relate because they both got boobs. With the support of my family, I was able to keep going, but they are resources out there. I will say that also, and that's, that's kind of what made me want to be a testimony to other people because when you go through cancer, a lot of us get this in our mind to kind of be isolated and kind of just withdraw. But well, really, that's the time we need to reach out. I kind of purposely avoided some support groups right after I finished my treatment because I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to kind of move on. But I do think that support networks are important for particularly young women because there are just so many various things that we experience. I've met a ton of women that are between the ages of 25 and 40, and we've got young kids, but we're also dealing with treatment. So we have different needs than an older population because we're still trying to juggle you know, spending time with our kids and our sex lives with our husbands. Along the way, reach out to support groups. Find someone, even if it's just one person, that has actually walked this journey. I met one of my good friends through this whole ordeal with the cancer. Her name is Raquel. She's always keeping me upbeat because I have had her to kind of guide me through. Before I met her, it was rough, you know, because I didn't have that survivor to help me along the way. You form these bonds with these women because you're swapping notes on therapies and pushing each other and encouraging each other during your times of ski anxiety, but it pushes us as a group to, you know, make sure that we're supportive for each other, that we accept each other when we're low and down and accept people to have room to feel sad, that it isn't, it isn't just about being happy and that you don't always feel happy and optimistic all the time. Sometimes you need time to be sad and you need to accept it. I think I, I did a really poor job while I was going through treatment and dealing with what I was going through and I think that's why it was so tough for me. So I meet women that are really embracing what is happening to them while it's happening. I'm hopeful that their journey following may not be as tough as mine was. To so any survivors that are going through this or are about to go through it, I mean just keep a positive attitude because I mean we're all here for each other.